morning dear friends and greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to this new day. And the Bible says his mercies are new every morning. The unchanging God will never forget and never, never fail to fulfill his promise. Today you have new mercies to employ in your life and enjoy your life. And may the Holy Spirit help you to do it. God loves you. Now I have a thought to pass on to you today also in continuation of what we considered yesterday. We started talking about the purpose for which God, I mean Jesus Christ has chosen his 12 disciples whom he designated apostles. The first purpose we saw yesterday was that they may be with him. And we have found out and discovered the means that we can appropriate and apply it in our daily life and be with Jesus. Let us do it. And the second purpose is that they may be sent out to do his work. Now remember, the first thing is that these disciples must learn to be with Jesus constantly. And on Jesus' part, the ones whom he would send out with his power, his authority, and his anointing are those who learn to be with him and learn to walk with him in the spirit. From his presence, he will send them forth. And so that is the second purpose. And what is that, what work? In the gospel according to St. John chapter 14 verse 12, Jesus said, Those who have a faith in me, they will do the same work that I am doing today. And then he said, in fact, they will do greater works than I did. Now that is the purpose. And then when Luke writing his, uh, um, uh, the history of the church in the book of Acts, through the book of Acts, he began by this. I am writing this to give you a proper account of Jesus Christ and uh, the works that he uh, gave his disciples to do after he is gone. The same work that Jesus began to do, his disciples were expected to do. Jesus expected his apostles to carry on the works Jesus Christ began to do after he went back to his father. And he told them in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 12, what is expected. The same thing that Jesus began to do. Now, what did he begin to do? There are two things. Number one, he began to teach. Now, 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 now that teaching involves preaching as well. He went about preaching the kingdom of God. And then his main ministry was teaching. And the second ministry was performing miracles and power, I mean, by the power of the Holy Spirit, miracles and signs and wonders. Now, According to Jesus, the authority has given to the disciples that empowered them to do the same work Jesus began to do in a greater way. Greater works or greater things. And the greater things include both the works of converting people to Christ and performing of miracles and wonders. 
This is clear as the book of Acts is opened up. Acts, the book of Acts, though it is called the Acts of the Apostles, it can rightly be called Acts of the Holy Spirit. For this reason, Jesus told them in John 16, 7, it is good for you that I go away to God the Father. Because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit will not come. It cannot come. But if I go, I will ask the Father and I will receive the Holy Spirit from him and send the Holy Spirit upon you and to you. For what? You remember the work and the ministry of Jesus Christ, whether teaching or preaching or performing miracles and wonders, he did it all by the power of the Holy Spirit. After, soon after the baptism, as he came out of the water, you remember the Holy Spirit descended from heaven in the form of a dove and set upon him. And ever since that moment, till the last moment of his life here on earth, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and he was in the fullness of the Spirit and he walked in the Spirit and he did everything by the power of the Holy Spirit. You remember once the Jewish leaders accused him of casting out demons by using a, uh, greater demons, Beelzebub. And to that Jesus answered them, listen, I don't cast out demons by another demon. I cast out demons by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the unforgiving sin is when people attribute the work of God done by the power of the Holy Spirit and attribute it to the devil. That is the unforgivable sin. And my friends, it is for this reason Jesus told them they, he commissioned them the day he ascended, just before the ascension, he commissioned them. You have to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then in the gospel according to St. Mark chapter 16, he said, these signs will follow them that believe. And he listed the miracle, miraculous work that these disciples were to do. But Jesus told them, you wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes. Because it is not man's work. It is the work of God. And it is going to be the Holy Spirit anointing you, filling you with his power and thus empowering you. And by his empowerment upon you, you will be able to perform what Jesus performed in a greater way. In a greater way means, includes in number as well as in scope. And then look what happened for 2,000 years, my friends. And in these last days, what has been lying dormant in the church world over, suddenly, a hundred years ago, maybe 150 years ago, God began to pour out His Spirit again. And again, miracles are happening. My friends, the miracles are not over yet. It is given to the church to continue that ministry. And as long as the church is here in this world, all that Jesus began to do also will happen. Teach, preach the gospel, and God confirm his word by miracles and signs and wonders. Remember, God is not going to confirm my idea, my opinions, my philosophy, my theology. No. He will confirm his word. And that's why we preachers and teachers of the Bible must remain true and loyal to the word of God and declare the pure, unadulterated 
gospel of Jesus Christ and thus calling people to repentance and to holy living and uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit, every born again Christian has to be a witness for Jesus. For this purpose, the Holy Spirit has been given to us. That's why Jesus said, it is good that I go away. And that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. And the power of the Holy Spirit came upon the church. Ever since the church was going forward, and ever since the church movement was the mightiest movement. And the church is the, the most powerful institution in this world today. All because of the presence of the risen Lord inside the church and the presence of the Holy Spirit and his power. Jesus said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. And thus you shall be my witnesses. It is his work. It is heavenly work. The gospel is heavenly gospel. And, the, and, and, and it can, uh, the message comes from heaven. And this gospel is heavenly gospel. It cannot be preached or declared by human strength or wisdom. It has to be declared by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is the mission. This is what you and I have to do. Let us dedicate ourselves in these last days, last moments of the last days. Let us bring people into the faith by being true to the gospel ourselves and declaring the gospel powerfully under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the wonderful message of your gospel available for us to declare today. The only hope for man to be changed and transformed. The only message that gives a hope for a hopeless world. The only message that gives a hope for eternity, not only for this life, but for eternity. And your coming is very near. Lord, we want to prepare ourselves. We want to help others to prepare for your coming. Thank you, Father. Use us in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, you be prepared to meet the Creator. At the same time, prepare others as well. This is your duty. God bless you.